In recent years, mainstream cinema has developed a distinct paranoia associated with surveillance and recording or photographic devices. This anxiety is a representation of modern day society's uneasy relationship with the accessibility of these devices. Some members embrace it, others are repulsed, quaking in the realization that they are being recorded and that the content is freely accessible across the globe on an infinite number of mobile devices and platforms. Online, your memories and successes are suspended in a vast chasm that is seemingly bottomless. So too are your mistakes. Society has demonstrated its insatiable appetite for information and eagerness to know and to observe others. But this is not a new phenomenon. The pioneers of the moving image, through experiments in the 1880s, had an explicit scientific purpose, to analyze the motions of animals and human beings and to thereby overcome the inertia of the human eye. Hence, cinema is the desire to capture that movement, to preserve it in time so that it is available at different times and places for an infinite number of viewings. As a medium for the recording and storing of visual and oral information, the technical apparatus of cinema satisfies at least two of the prime functions for any surveillance system. The analysis of a given situation so that we can control it. This concept has been explored and challenged through the early days of cinema, but emerging digital technologies has amplified the tension within society. A strain that has been represented through the role of surveillance and digital technology in contemporary culture, namely Hollywood and mainstream film. This fascination with video and surveillance technology and the consequent ubiquity of content on the internet has saw the creation of popular reality television episodes. By analysing some examples that explore this concept, one may understand the dangers regarding cinema and the prevalence of scopophilia that has emerged in recent films that seek to highlight the role of emerging photographic technologies in everyday life. Laura Mulvey has written extensively about scopophilia, the sexual pleasure that one gets from looking at an erotic object. Scopophilia in films is a structure which functions on an axis of passive-active, with the man usually on the active gazing side and the woman on the passive object side. Mulvey's essay, Visual Pleasure in Narrative Cinema, argues that Hollywood narrative films use women in order to provide a pleasurable visual experience for men. Mulvey wrote this paper almost 15 years after the release of the hugely controversial Peeping Tom by Michael Powell. The film documents the story of Mark Lewis, a photographer who has a homicidal streak. The dark and cognitive nature of the film disturbed audiences of the period, effectively ending Powell's career. Peeping Tom forces audiences to recognise their own voyeurism in a quite discomforting way of reflecting them by a sadistic psychopath. In relation to Mulvey, she argues that the film raises questions about the cinema itself and how it appeals to voyeuristic instinct. The story, although extreme, reflects outwards and onto the cinema's intrinsic fascination with looking and the ease with which it makes voyeurs of us all. Paul Bartel's debut short, The Secret Cinema, in 1968 explores voyeurism in a slightly different way. The film revolves around Jane, a hapless young woman who is the protagonist in a film she is unaware of. Those around her are also characters, but they are consciously aware of their role as manipulators. Bartel cleverly challenges the lines between fiction and reality. What is reality and what is orchestrated can only be realised by the close of the film as we realise that a doctor has been making a film about a film. Mulvey's assertion that the female is subjected to the passive is edified by the mockery of the central character by everyone who interacts with her, including the audience. Jane is an incapacitated female character, shackled by her obliviousness to the architecture of cinema, and thus, she's passively and unknowingly there for our amusement and there to be gazed upon. The central figure within Andrea Arnold's Red Road subverts the male gaze that Mulvey associates with the cinema. In this film, Jackie exploits her position as a CCTV operator to stalk and interrogate a man she believes to have killed her husband and daughter. What was initially set up as a security measure for the Red Road Flats has succumbed to a dark, personal curiosity that borders on perversion. Jackie destabilizes convention and expectation. She controls the viewpoint, choosing which screen to follow. Jackie has access to many narratives through her interaction with the technology and screens in her booth. The spaces of people are now crisscrossed by the gaze of closed circuit cameras, operated either by the state or commercial bodies, and whose very existence helps blur the lines between public and private. This is especially true in Red Road. The birth of Big Brother and various other reality television franchises have attracted millions of viewers and subscribers in the last decade. Big Brother began as an experiment in governance, 
a scientific study of the psychological impact of surveillance on a closed and selected test group. Gareth Palmer, writing in the University of Salford, has highlighted the programme's role as an opportunity for contestants to develop their sense of self as performers and subjects in the process. Some embrace the opportunity, recognising it as an empowerment tool. This is largely because the digital revolution has opened avenues for the public construction of one's persona or, in some cases, several personas. Big Brother became a public platform integral to the contestants' willed for self-creation. Being on television, and later the internet, validates their media self. They see their lives as projects and work, consciously on them, like dieters, or keep fitters, or auto addicts in night class. Palmer emphasises that our enterprise culture offers us the opportunity to fashion a self that can be endlessly remade and remodeled according to one's resources. The threat of surveillance, the reduction of personhood to commodity status, and the separation of the psychological from its political base once constituted threats to civilians. Connecting to the Big Brother house via the internet is truly a combination of the panoptic and the synoptic, in that as we watch the internet, unseen others can load multiple amounts of information onto our hard drives. Modern urban life makes our own everyday experience not unlike that of the contestants, in that we encounter this technology on a day-to-day basis, as society is laden with cameras. The central contradiction here is that protection and liberty, public and private, will always be in conflict. It is not so much that we control the technology now, but rather that we have altered our behaviour to allow for a consistent awareness and, sometimes, paranoia that someone is watching and recording us.